Welcome to the Back to the Bricks podcast, a new podcast about sports, faith, and culture. I'm Justin. And I'm Nick. Close friends turn mid-major rivals. Join us as we venture back to the Bricks. Hey friends, welcome to the Back to the Bricks podcast. We are so excited that you are joining us for this first episode, this introduction. I'm Nick and I'm joined by my best friend Justin. We are best friends who grew up in the same area of Cincinnati, but we happen to go to rival schools, um, which is the battle of the Bricks, Miami University and Ohio University. So that's what inspired our lovely Back to the Bricks name, but that's a little bit about us and we're going to get right into it. Justin, what... What on earth have you been doing during quarantine? Well, my man, first off, it's good to be here. Um, hello to all you people listening. Thank you. But during quarantine, um, I've been watching a lot of Netflix. I'm doing a lot of work around the house. The wife's been painting. I've been, you know, not the best with painting, so I haven't been doing that. But just hanging around the house, doing doing some work, hanging out with the dogs, and watching no sports. I know that because there's been nothing on TV sports-wise to watch. No so, sports? None. I mean, what do you do with that? Especially for us. Like, sports is such a big part of who we are, so that's been difficult. Um, but, I mean, I've been watching replays of stuff, you know, that I know the outcome of, but have been uh, excited about. So, And then a couple of games that I didn't get to catch through the years and couldn't remember the outcome, so that's been kind of exciting. So that's really what I've been doing on the sports, sports side. What about you? I mean, same, same kind of thing. Spending some great time with the wife, not watching sports. Not watching the NCAA tournament, the big dance. I mean, just heart shattering at this point. I really don't know what to do with it, Justin. What are we supposed to do about not having the NCAA tournament? Watch simulations, I guess. I mean, that's all there is to do. That's all we got. Or act like our our picks are the best because they're never going to come true. So, I mean, I guess that's what could have happened. I, I guess I'll always go down saying the Irish would have made it in the tournament because they would have won the ACC tournament. But you never know. So. You know, I think the Irish might have got hot in Greensboro. You know, my parents, they were at the ACC tournament. They were there for two rounds and didn't yeah. get to see the cards. Didn't they see Hancock? They did there? see Luke Hancock yeah. on the ACC network, our guy, our guy Cold Hand Luke. But, man, that was that was bad, dude. They, they cut off the conference tournament. Some of them had just tipped a game. I believe it was the Big East. The or the Big, Big East. Tor- the yeah. Big East yeah. had started the game, and they took them off the court. Yeah. Right, so we got the NCAA tournament is gone. We're supposed to be a few weeks into the baseball season, professional baseball, MLB. The Reds were going to be good, correct? I'll say it again: the Reds were going to be good, <laughs> and here we are, perfectly sitting with no baseball. Go figure. The most Cincinnati of years, but the only real thing that I've found soulless in Justin is Netflix. Yes. Now, I've tried Hulu. Don't pay for it, no. and there's just not. It's not worth it. But I agree. Netflix. You know, we have been finding what's good and what's not. So what's not good on Netflix, Justin? <sighs> There's a couple things that haven't been good. My wife really likes the uh, show My Hotter Half. I haven't been I haven't been a big fan of it. Basically, they just compare the couple and see who's who's better looking, which, you know, I, I'm not a fan of that because I'm the worst looking one in the couple. So, you know, that just puts bad stuff on me. So, I mean, Nick can relate to that. He is as well. So, um, but that's been bad. And there's just like a bunch of stuff I've turned on for like 10 minutes and then turned off that I can't even remember because it's so bad. So, I mean, that sounds like riveting television. Yes. I would agree with the not being the hotter <laughs> of the half there. But there is one show that obviously we're going to talk about. Everybody's talking about it. Tiger King, Justin. Yes, sir. What on earth? Where do we even start? What is Tiger King? Is there anywhere to start? I mean, the name is Tiger King. You you turn it on expecting to learn about tigers, right? And then the next thing you know, it has nothing to do with the big cats, even though they're in it. It has to do with all these people's everyday drama. And you get wrapped up in their life for, what is it, seven episodes? Seven episodes. Which isn't enough. That was not enough. We need more. So I hear they're putting a show together, but if you get on Netflix and turn on the first episode, you'll watch the rest in in your sitting because it's just, it's a Netflix soap opera. I mean, it's everything that's right about the world in some ways, I would say. Correct. But you know, you know, Justin, I think there's a lot of really interesting storylines there. Now, again, if you haven't seen Tiger King on Netflix, first of all, where you been? Correct. What are you doing? 
You should be at home, and if you're not at home, get your butt home. That's the first point. You're on quarantine. There's nothing else to do. You should be watching the Tiger King. But there was kind of a kind of a main argument that came out from Tiger King. Our guy, Joe Exotic, is in prison currently, where he now has COVID-19. Yes, he does. He has COVID-19, so prayers up for Joe Exotic. But I think the story, I'm sorry, I think the docuseries made it pretty clear that our man Joe Exotic got framed. What do you think about that? Justin? They definitely did play that angle, um, and so that you gotta you gotta think maybe there's stuff in there that they left out. But I I I definitely think he was framed um, with the people who they believed that being the FBI and stuff. They believed some shady characters. Um, Allen, I think, was the guy's name. The guy who said that he went down there to kill Carol Baskin, which big time character. If you haven't seen it. Um, so there's a bunch of stuff of people they believed who are shady. Now, Joe himself is shady, too. Let's Don't get me wrong. But I, I think he was framed. I think people just wanted him out of the business. So, You know, I agree, Justin. I think he was framed. I mean, we had some shady characters. You brought up Alan. Great point. Alan, our man Alan, on, on the same episode, said he went to Tampa to kill Carol Baskin. Said he didn't. On the next episode, told us that he received three thousand dollars from Joe Exotic, and then he turned around and said he hadn't. I'm sorry, man. Not the most trustworthy character. I wanted to like him, but I just couldn't. And you know, I think the crazy point of the whole the whole series was that Joe kind of looked more normal yeah. the farther we got into the series. Yes, he did. Which, I mean, Justin, tell us who this man is, just so we can get a full picture. Uh, this man. First off, he learned magic tricks from a 10-year-old, I think, for some of his gig. And then he bought, started buying big cats. So he's got this zoo in Oklahoma, which in the middle of nowhere, Oklahoma. The man has two husbands. Neither of them are legal, though, because that's not legal in Oklahoma from what I read. But he's got two husbands. One of them, they both were like 19 when he met them. Um, what else we got? He tra- He sells these uh, cubs, these tiger cubs for money. Um, he loves shooting guns. <laughs> he shoots so much stuff in this show. Um, he was like one step away from getting a documentary approved by like Nat Geo to like be on TV as the Tiger King. Like there's so much just like, and he's a country music star. There's just so much stuff about Joe Exotic that's just wild. It's truly wild. Now, Nick, can you inter- introduce us to the next big character carol baskin carol you know justin carol is a begins to be portrayed as a wonderful woman yes she owns the big cat rescue in tampa florida it is a sanctuary of sorts for these big cats that have been at zoos or been bred illegally or been pets all these different situations but as we go down the storyline through the seven episodes we see that she kind of treats her animals in in a somewhat similar fashion to joe exotic and she kind of has this running feud with Joe Exotic, right? Joe Exotic likes to use explicatives that we will not use on the podcast when he describes Carol Baskin. <laughs> but he kind of takes shots at her. He has this live television show that he streams every night. Again, you got to watch it if you haven't. But Carol is kind of this, like, villain at the beginning of the series. Or I'm sorry, she starts as a hero, right? But mm-hmm. as you can tell by what I already said, she becomes the villain. And I'm kind of buying that she's the villain, Justin. I... I agree. When she was trying to get Joe Exotic's business and then once his parents' house, and then that's not even a big thing. Supposedly, she killed her husband. We didn't even bring that up. Folks, she killed her husband. That's yeah, not a... There it's is not no, supposed. There yeah. is no, you know, thinking about killing her husband. She killed her husband. You see, her, her lovely husband just mysteriously disappeared years ago, and she's quoted in the docuseries casually telling us, how how you could feed someone to the tigers if you were going to feed someone to the tigers. And, I mean, kind of sounds like O.J. Simpson to me, Justin. A little like, bit. Why would you write a book called If I Did It and tell us how you would have killed your wife and her boyfriend, or I'm sorry, your ex-wife and her boyfriend, Yeah. if you didn't do it? Right. Why would you tell us here's how you kill a person with a tiger in a tiger cage if you didn't do it. Right. I mean, but let's go back to that tiger cage. If Joe Exotic and Carol Baskin were in that tiger cage together, Justin. Yes. Who would win in a cage match? I would want to say 
that Joe Exotic wins. But if you take his gun away, I think he weighs like 75 pounds. So you got to go with Carol. First off, she's evil. Second off, she is she is a murderer. I'm going to say it. She killed her husband. And so she's crazy enough to beat the living tar out of Joe Exotic in a mat, in a cage match. I think Carol's winning. That's who I put my money on. You know, as much as I want to disagree, and we'll disagree on various topics throughout the podcast here, I agree with you. I think Carol Baskin has some get up. I think she gets off the line. You know, she's got those quick twitch fibers. You know, and I think underneath all that big flowy hippie looking stuff that she wears, she's fit. You know, that's just, I think she's fit. And I think that she's been prepping for a long time to have to hand combat with our man Joe Exotic. Yes. He's threatened her life multiple times. He has. And that's, again, I'm not saying that any of the any of the characters are great on this show. Don't get me wrong. But our man Joe did threaten her life multiple times. And Correct. One of the best, one of the best memes out there is a picture of him in his camo with his pink camo gun. And he says, if I ever go psychotic, this is my going to Tampa gun. Things <laughs> things you shouldn't say. <laughs> and then later try to, to try to back up that you weren't actually Correct. hiring somebody to murder. Correct. Joe, Joe did several things wrong on this. So he's not he's not innocent in all of it. But he is the sweetheart of the show, I think I we mean, can call him. I think so. You know, yeah. the man loves. He loves very deeply. Yes, he does. And the other thing that the man did is my man ran for president several years ago. And most of us didn't hear about it. But then he kind of took it a notch down. He didn't really get a platform going there. He decided to run for governor of the great state of Oklahoma. And get this, get this, Justin. He got 20% of the vote in Oklahoma. I'm sorry, he got 19% 19, of the yeah. vote. Do you think you could get 20%? Um, no, I, I don't. Uh, the Joe Exotic is wild and crazy enough out there that he's going to get people to vote for him just because of who he is. He's pro-guns. Pro-guns, that's, that's one check, thing. check. Uh, he's probably pro hands off government, check. which is another check. So the man had a had a okay platform for not knowing what he was doing, and he was going to get enough of the people in Oklahoma's votes, if you if you can read between the lines there, to to get nineteen percent of the votes. I don't think I could go out there and do that. There's no way I could get twenty percent of the vote. No, and I think you would be exposed pretty quickly. He's not an yeah. Oklahoman, not right, not gun toting enough. You know, not free from the government states rights enough but i i would have to agree i don't think i could get 20 percent of the vote either but it, it just begs the question you know what kind of candidate does it take to get 20 percent of the vote in oklahoma i mean i'm just honestly asking the question but we'll wrap that up go joe exotic out. tiger king like justin said make sure you're going to check it out now something we're going to do on the podcast um every episode is we're going to let you know some different things that we've seen, and we'll start with our funniest thing, Justin. What what is the funniest thing that you've seen recently? So the funniest thing I've seen, the NBA Network's been showing these hardwood classics, they call them. So the 1984 Game Seven. So if you don't know, that's you know the Celtics and the Lakers. That's Bird and it's Magic and Kareem and all those guys. So everybody's debate, Nick, with the NBA is today they don't play defense or they don't play hard, they which don't. you would agree. Yeah, you would agree. In the regular season, they don't. But this is Game 7 of the NBA Finals in 1984. The glory days, as they call it, of the NBA. And guess what? They didn't play defense either. Okay, Danny Ainge is like in mid-range, which in that day was like the money shot. In mid-range, and they weren't even guarding him. They were standing in the paint. Larry Bird is at the three-point line. They aren't guarding him. Magic's driving right to the bucket. Nobody's playing any defense. Nick, the score at the end of the first quarter was like 26-24. Is that defense? It's not defense, but I'm not shocked, Justin. I'm just going to be honest. Well, right. I mean, everybody has a jaded view of their era of stuff, right? And all I've heard from people growing up was that all they did was play defense back in the day. They only played defense on one guy, Michael Jordan, and they fouled him. They That's didn't fair. even play defense. That's fair. So you can't tell me, all you old people, all you people who love the old NBA, don't tell me they played defense. They didn't. All right. LeBron could have gone and had 60 in that era, too. So. Wow, that is quite a statement. Yeah, I, I would agree, Justin. I, I don't love the NBA. Um, one of our main disagreements as far as sports are concerned, and like we've told you, we'll, we'll talk a lot of sports here. This isn't mainly a sports podcast, but it will be a main theme. Um, and I love my Louisville guys. I love Donovan Mitchell. 
you know, he's coming out of the COVID-19. Shout out to Spida. Shout out to the Ville. But they just don't play defense. And when they do, it's in the playoffs. Now, I will, again, I don't watch a lot of NBA. So maybe, maybe it's just because when I turn it on, that's what I see. I turn it off. I do like to watch the teams that move the ball well. But that's about it. I'm a big college basketball guy. We'll talk a lot about college basketball. The funniest thing I've seen this week, Justin, funniest thing I've seen was The Bachelor, our boy, Pilot Pete. Now, again, we lo- we like reality television. We do. We'll tell you when we do on the podcast. The season's been over for a few weeks. Incredibly terrible finale. Hot garbage. Hot garbage season, quite frankly. Yes. I mean, our yes. man, Pilot Pete. Dating 40 women in the worst possible... I mean, hot garbage in the way that he did And he couldn't find one of them that would stay with him. But you or see, that he would be with. Yeah, but you see, Justin, here's the thing. Here's the funny part is we get pictures recently of our guy, Pilot Pete, and Kelly, who was top four, got a bad cut from the producers. I'm not biting that bait. I know what happened. Okay, she looked too good on the season. She handled herself well. She stayed out of the drama. So we did a little audio over video edits at the end when we sent her home to make it look like she was a villain. She was not. We're not buying that ABC producers. No. But anyways, we see pictures of Pete and Kelly not quarantining, first of all. Second of all, they're in Chicago, Justin. Correct. And he's like airplaning her around They're definitely Chicago. not six foot away. I mean, they're not. Okay, and here's the kicker is we got a guy from Bachelor season, I think like 14. I don't know his name. I apologize. But he, he went on an interview a few days later and said, oh, yeah, they're dating. So after all this whole Madison and Hannah Ann stuff, he's with Kelly after all, which is a sensible choice for a lot of reasons. Yes. But what are we doing, Pete? We're not quarantining. We're not we're not making sense. And we're making really poor TikToks, I might add. Oh, I haven't seen those. I'm going to check those out. bad TikToks. Oh, wow. But anyways, Justin, another segment of our show is the, our GOAT of the week who is the greatest of all time for the week for you my greatest of all time's got to be my guy drew Brees, um giving five million dollars to the the city of new orleans um during this time i mean is there anybody who personifies a city more than he does drew Brees in, in new sports? orleans yep you think of drew Brees, you think of new orleans you think of new orleans you think of drew Brees. so that's a that's a big move we've seen some other guys do that blake griffin zion but they gave him to their their stadium workers which was which is a good thing but Drew Brees giving it to the whole city, and I'm sure he's doing more down there. So that's – during this time, that's got to be my my go to the week. Nick, who's your go to the week? I've got two. I'll get right out in front of it. i got two. It's the governors of both the state of Ohio and the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Commonwealth. Governor DeWine in Ohio and Governor Bashir in the Commonwealth of Kentucky have done a fantastic job since the word go with COVID-19, since it even had thoughts of getting to the U.S. We started to see our first reported cases. These two men have been out in front of it, my guys Andy and Mike. Killing it. Some great memes out there about both of them. And I got to tell you, Justin, I'll give you a little a little preview of where I'm going next. When it comes to roasting people, and we like to roast people on this podcast, my man, Governor Bashir, roasts people like no other. My man called out a church by name yesterday hey. for still having in-person services. Now, again, we'll talk about faith on this podcast. We haven't talked a lot about it yet today, but it will come up in the future. And I think something that's great is a lot of the local churches around here have said, hey, here's how we honor our neighbor. Here's how we honor our leadership. We're going to stay home. We're going to do online services, doing them really well. And more people are getting to hear about Jesus than normal, which is awesome. We'll never get in the way of that. But in Kentucky, Governor Bashir has been calling out churches by name who are not closing and who are helping COVID-19 spread in the Commonwealth. So he is both part of my MVP. He's also my roast of the week because, I mean, give it to him, Andy. Keep going. Tell these people they need to shut the doors. They need to stop showing up. And again, this is not about a faith issue here. Correct. This is a smart issue. Again, we'll tell it to you straight. One of the things we're not going to tolerate is when people of faith don't use wisdom. That's just all I'm going to say. Yeah, we're not fans of that. Justin, Justin, who are you going to roast this week? My roast of the week um, has got to be... Um, the United States, let me find it. I found, I had it online. Let me find it. The United States Basketball Writers Association, okay, for, um, Obi Toppin, okay. He got first team for their association, which is legit. It's big time. But they put him down. They put his name, Nick, as Obi Tobin. The guy won player of the year for the AP. 
Um, the guy got voted first team in your association, and you can't even get his name right. Nick, that leads me to think if this was a Power Six guy, you know, Big 12, Big East, ACC, that, that they would have got his name right. But because he plays for the Dayton Flyers, they didn't. So my roast of the week is if, he's, if somebody's going to be on your first team, spell his name right. That's lottery true. pick, too. He's going to be a lottery yeah, pick. Yeah, he's a lottery pick. Spell his name right. That's my Redshirt thing. sophomore out of the Dayton Flyers. He's going to be a lottery pick. Watch out for my man Obadiah Toppin. Right. Obi Toppin. Not Toppin. It's Toppin. What about challenge, Justin? We are, we're we going to throw down a challenge of the week. Sometimes we'll give you two. Sometimes we'll give you one. And we'll check back in with you to see where you're at. And what I want you to do here for this first podcast is if you accepted our challenge this week, go ahead and let us know on our social media platforms so we can check in with you after the week and check in with you on the next episode. So with that said, Justin, what are you going to challenge the people with this week? Our challenge this week is really just do the right thing. You know, do the right thing. We get you want to go out and see your families. We get you want to go out and do whatever. First off, our governors have taken away our our ability to do that, which is a great thing. Um, but do the right thing. Help some people. Check on your neighbors. Make sure they're doing all right. So like Nick said, if, if you're doing the right thing this week and you want to comment or send us whatever, just use hashtag do the right thing and we'll, we'll put it out and, and demonstrate how people are doing the right thing during these challenging times. That's right. Just like the man said, I'm not going to add anything there. Do the right thing. Follow your governor's orders. Stay home. Stop the spread. I'd like, I'd like to see some sports soon, and I'd like to see less people die. It's really that simple. So do what you can. Stay home with your family. Start some new rhythms with your family. Enjoy your time. And you know what? Come out better people who have grown because of it. We are so thankful that you joined us for the first episode of Back to the Bricks, and we will catch you back on the bricks next time. Thank you for listening to the Back to the Bricks podcast. We'd love for you to leave us a review wherever you listen to podcasts, send this podcast to a friend, or share this episode on your Instagram story. We'll see you back on the bricks next time.